Hello and welcome everyone. I'm going to give a brief uh, introduction into the new uh, meta regression features that are now implemented in the base meta R package. So I'll first uh, say a few words about meta analysis, simple meta analysis in general and the base meta package. And then I'll uh, go to the case of uh, co-variables that are available at the study level. Um, I'll briefly talk about different parameterizations, uh, also about uh, several co-variables and binary and continuous co-variables. I point out some uh, more advanced uh, applications and close with some conclusions. So, um, so far in the base meta package, um, the simple normal normal hierarchical model was implemented and that's sketched on this slide. So what we have is we have a number of estimates called YI here and uh, um, along with their standard error sigma I and the assumption made is that uh, these uh, Estimates here are measuring a true parameter theta i uh, with some uncertainty given by the standard error. And these true values are not necessarily the same or identical uh, for all the studies, but they also have some variation uh, associated with that's given by this heterogeneity tau squared or tau heterogeneity variance tau squared. Um, so the parameters that we have in the end is uh, first of all, the overall mean mu, um, the heterogeneity tau, and uh, sometimes you're also interested in these study-specific means for, for shrinkage estimations, these uh, theta i parameters here. Yeah, so that's the model that is implemented in the base meta function. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the way it's done is uh, using some uh, numerical trick here. It's not based on MCMC. So uh, yeah, and, and that's the neat thing that uh, it's uh, you have direct access uh, to posterior densities, posterior distribution functions, and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, it gives you nicely reproducible and quick results. Yeah, so extending to the case of meta regression, um, the setup is similar. So we still have a number of estimates and standard errors. And in addition, uh, we have a number of covariables available at the study level here. So it's a number D of covariables. And uh, the model still looks similar here. So we still have. Um, the true specific, the study specific means theta i here and their uh, uh, measurement error sigma uh, given by sigma here. Um, but uh, the mean of these uh, uh, study specific parameters here is now given by a linear combination of the covariables times uh, uh, these unknown coefficients here. And so for the model, this means that instead of the single overall intercept or overall mean parameter mu, we now have a number of coefficients to be estimated. And then again, heterogeneity and the study specific means here. Um, yeah, the model is similar and this uh, computational approach uh, still works and that's now implemented in the so-called BMR function. And I'll go straight to an example here. So that's uh, an example including six studies here. We've got six estimates of a log odds ratio, logarithmic odds ratio. Uh, along with a standard error, the uncertainty here. And in addition, we have this uh, treatment covariable here. So we have uh, the six studies that are based on two different treatments. So one is Daclizumab, the other one is this Basiliximab treatment. Um, yeah, and we can account for that in the analysis. And if we want uh, estimate two individual means for these two treatments here. And in order to do that, we need to, I mean, we need to code this information um, for the analysis, and we do that by putting it into this regressor matrix, capital X. Um, it has, in this case, two columns for the two parameters that we are after, um, coding these two group assignments here. And we've got six rows corresponding to the six studies, and we've got, yeah, zeros and ones indicating uh, which study belongs to which group here, or which treatment. The actual implementation then looks like this. So we first of all uh, load the package, we load the data set, and then we compute the log odds ratios and their standard errors. And then uh, what we need to do in addition is specify the regressor matrix. So that's the matrix that we've seen on the previous slide now uh, implemented in R with two columns, six rows for two parameters and six studies here. Um, and to perform the analysis, we just uh, need to call this BMR function here. We assign the results to this BMR01 uh, object here, and we specify or we, we supply uh, 
the data, the estimates and thin errors, we supply the capital X here, the regressor matrix. And in addition, we also have a, a, a prior for the heterogeneity here. Um, we could also omit that. In that case, we'd be using the default of a, of a uniform heterogeneity prior. Yeah, so executing this command, we get this result here. <clears throat> so that's the um, default printout of the, of the analysis output. And the, the exact details are not so relevant. Important thing is that if you're familiar with the previous uh, base meta output, this looks uh, very similar. It's just now we have um, three parameters in this particular case. So we still have estimates for the heterogeneity. And now we also have estimates quoted for the two regression parameter, the two beta coefficients here corresponding to the basilixumab and daclizumab treatment here in this case. And we can also illustrate the results graphically. So for example, we can look at posterior densities or marginal posterior densities here for the heterogeneity for beta one, the one regression parameter and beta two, the other regression parameter. And I guess the more common way to illustrate things is also um, using a forest plot and we can do that as well. So the forest plot uh, looks slightly different from what you may be used to uh, from the base meta package so far. So we have the usual setup here. So we've got the estimates and their uh, standard errors quoted and we have got them illustrated on the right here as well. And in addition, now we've got uh, in, in the left half here, we also have the regressor matrix reproduced. So we can see which study corresponded to which regressor matrix uh, settings here. And at the bottom now, we don't just have a single uh, overall estimate, but we also have, we've got uh, two parameters to be estimated. One is this basiliximab coefficient. The other one is the daclizumab coefficient or the group mean and the other one group mean and the other group mean. And yeah, we've got the uh, estimates quantified here and also illustrated in the plot on the right. Yeah, so from the, um, based from the BMR functions output, um, we, we assigned that to this BMR01 object here. And from there, we can actually access if we want uh, more detailed information on the parameters on shrinkage estimates and so on. And for that, we have a number of uh, functions that are included in this output object here. So in order to uh, look at posterior densities, posterior a cumulative distribution functions, quantile functions, and so on. We can use this D posterior, P posterior, Q posterior function. So the naming is similar to what you may be used to from, from uh, other probability distributions uh, in R. Uh, and so for example, we can look at the posterior quantile, the 99% quantile of the tau parameter here and, and get that number from the, from the output here. Or similarly, we can look for quantiles of the of the beta parameters, we just need to specify which one we're looking for. Or we can also uh, compute posterior cumulative distribution functions and so on. Now, the difference to the uh, simple meta regression is that in a, uh, the simple meta analysis is that in a meta regression, you're quite often interested also in linear combinations of the regression coefficients, the, the regression parameters here. And we can also access these. Um, and for that, we also have, again, a, a set of functions available. And what we need to do in addition is we need to specify this covariable vector that we that we are after here. So for example, I mean, one example would be, we've got the basiliximab and the daclizumab uh, treatment effects. And one uh, obvious question might be, well, is there a difference or how large is the difference between these two uh, group means here? And we can implement that and we can say, well, the difference between the two coefficients is just, you know, one times the one coefficients plus minus one times the other coefficient. So that would be daclizumab minus basiliximab. We supply this contrast vector here, this, this x coefficient vector here, and then we can get posterior density distribution function, or in this case, an interval for this, for this difference uh, in group means here in this case. And then again, similarly, we can look for a prediction interval, in this case, for one of the groups here, including also the heterogeneity to make a prediction for a future study, for example. Uh, and we can also look at uh, shrinkage intervals if we're interested in the study specific effects here 
by uh, yeah, uh, specifying which uh, effect we're after either by the index or by the name. Yeah, so this, I guess these uh, specifying these, these contrast or these covariable vectors is, is uh, uh, quite convenient. And you can also do that for the forest plot. So to also uh, illustrate that graphically, and so this shows the pre essentially the, 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 the forest plot that we've seen previously, but now we have um, supplied a number of contrast vectors here. So that's the ones that we've seen previously as well. So it's one and zero and zero and one for the two individual group means, but we can also include the difference in the same plot. And we see that at the bottom here, we can again see the corresponding uh, coefficient settings here, and then we can get uh, an estimate of the effect in the two individual groups, and then also an estimate of the difference between the two groups here by simply supplying the corresponding uh, coefficient vectors here. And it's you've got a similar functionality here for the summary function as well. So you can get out the estimates from there as well if you're not only interested in the plot, but also in the, in the actual numbers. Yeah, just a, a general remark. So the setup of the regression matrix or the, the regressor matrix, the covariable matrix is usually uh, not unique at all. So there's different ways to code the same regression problem. So one example here would be the, the default that would uh, often be used in, in uh, R regression applications using an intercept and, and offset uh, coding here. Um, and there are other examples, but uh, just general remark, these should lead to uh, consistent results. And one note of caution, in case you're um, using proper priors for the regression parameters, for the beta parameters here, then that if you want to switch from one parameterization to the other, that, that needs to be accounted for. So that's yeah a, different from, a difference from uh, frequentist analyses in general. Yeah, so far we've only looked at um, binary covariables. This is just one brief example, also including continuous covariables. So in this case, it's a meta-analysis including 35 studies. Um, and each study was using a different onset of the medication and a different dose of medication. And we can see how that affects uh, the efficacy of the uh, treatment. In this case, we can code this in four, in terms of four coefficients here. Um, there's again, of course, different parameterizations uh, possible. In this case, we have a yeah, four column matrix for these regressors here. And we can have a quick look at the output here. So we can see, we can also model continuous covariables along with binary covariables. So we've got two groups here and a continuous covariable. And it looks like in, in one group, we have an effect of those. Um, and if we are, uh, if the onset is late here, we, we don't actually see a, a substantial effect of increasing or decreasing the dose. Yeah, so just briefly, we've, we've already seen that we can figure out the, the contrast between basiliximab and teclizumab, uh, the, the two treatments here. And so uh, technically that is a so-called indirect comparison. And that means that we are uh, in, to some extent, uh, uh, getting into the uh, domain of network meta-analysis models. And yeah, we can in fact um, analyze some network meta-analysis problems here. And there's just some restrictions that we need to be looking at uh, contrast estimates from the individual studies. We can only work with two armed trials and we have a single common heterogeneity parameter. Another extension is um, that from the BMR output, we can also get the marginal likelihood. And that of course is, uh, is interesting because that means we can compute base factors, which is often useful for model selection, for variable selection also model averaging applications. Yeah, so just to sum up briefly, um, we've, we've seen the, the extension from simple meta-analysis to meta-regression. I guess the most uh, popular or most common application is going to be uh, meta-analysis, including subgroups of studies and looking at uh, the different means in the different groups or it, whether there is a difference in the, uh, between the groups actually. Um, but there's, of course, a wide range of applications, uh, including continuous covariables, including network meta-analysis, model selection, and so on. Um, just a brief note of caution, if you're switching between parameterizations, unlike in frequentist models, you may need to account for that 
uh, in the prior specification in case you're using an informative prior for the regression coefficients. Yeah, so the new base meta package uh, version should be available on CRAN meanwhile. And yeah, I'm happy to answer questions or comments now or later. Thank you very much.